video, we're going to have a look at how to use cookies to show or hide content on the website. So as an example, for example, visit the latest music releases here on my homepage. I visit music. I go back to the homepage and now I have the message, you visited the music category. Um, if I go and have a look at my cookies now, you will see that under cookies now, we have music listed. Right, with that done, let's uh, do the same with hoodies. So we're going to visit the hoodies page, back to the home page, and you visited the hoodies category. So that's how the text is shown or hidden, is by using cookies. And of course, you can um, use these to create promotions and all kinds of interesting content on the website. Also, maybe personalize a bit for the visitor. So how is this done? Well, it's a two-stage process. The one is we create the code. We create these functions and the second stage then is to apply the condition to the content. So if I have a look at the functions, there are two. The first one looks at creating the cookie and then the next batch, the other two, then just check to see if the cookie is available. So the action to create the cookie, we fire on template redirect. I found that to be the best. Um, some of the other standard WordPress functions don't record the cookie. So that's the one that I found to um, be the most consistent and work. And basically what we do is we first check to see if we're on a product category. If we're on a product category, we, we then get the queried object. So that means we get all the information available about that particular category. And the information that we're looking for is the slug. So we then get the product cat and slug. Once we have that information, we can set the cookie. So to set the cookie, we say we're going to set the cookie. It's a single um, item. And then here we have the, the cookie time. And we're going to set the cookie for only for one day. You can set it for as many days as you want. And then WordPress um, requires us to use cookie path and cookie domain to make sure that we set the cookie correctly. So with that in place, then um, you will see that we don't specify which category. And you'll notice here then that I can go to any category. So let's go to T-shirts, for example. When I go to T-shirts, if I head over, you will see now that T-shirts has also been added to my list of cookies. All right, so there we have T-shirts. If you want to localize for a specific category, then of course you can have is product category. So we first check that it is a product category and maybe then we can check if it is uh, if the slug is equal to so here we're going to check the slug value then so if and we'll say um, slug and we can make sure that the slug is the same as not equal to it must be the same as music or if the slug is the same as and i'll fix that now is the same as hoodie so we delete that and single inverted comma right so now we're just going to check if the slug is the same as hoodies or not or as music or not and we just close off that if statement right so there we have our if statement and we're just going to check for those two so now i'm going to save that and then we're going to head over to the website and i'm going to go over to the home page i'm going to just delete um, the cookies so i'm here in the cookies we're going to remove hoodies remove music remove t-shirts done Right, so if I refresh the page now, you'll see that we have the message saying that we haven't visited those categories. So first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to head over to Accessories and see if Accessories is recorded. Head over to my cookies now, and you'll see that Accessories is not in the list. Right, the list of cookies is alphabetical, and it's not there. Now we want to check if um, music will be listed. So head over to Music. And I'll know if music is in the list simply by going to the home page. And I see the message, you visited the music category. And I'm going to do that for hoodies as well. And back to the home page. And now the 
function will only fire on those two categories and you'll see here hoodies and music is there and it doesn't matter what else I go to it's just not going to appear in the list of cookies so that's how you can then isolate the cookies that you're going to use then is to use the um, to use this if statement to check the slug and of course the cookie will only last for one day so if I go and I have a look at the cookie information and we can just check so when I click on hoodies now and I scroll down here you'll see created and expires and you'll see that it's a day later so this cookie will only be available for one day right um, you could of course extend it to as long as you want um, or you could even uh, create a statement uh, so that the cookie time only falls between certain dates so if it's only going to run for us for between the first and the seventh after the seventh the cookie no longer gets set so you can also uh, set the cookie to run between times um, then of course here we have the function to check if the cookie exists so here we're having a look if is set and that checks to see if and it checks to see if this variable uh, with the value of hoodies exists and if this variable with the array of music exists so that's all we have to do is go is set and say cookie or hoodies and if it returns the true value then do something so that is this is the information that we're going to use in in, in our condition so if i was to select for example by check hoodies cookie i'm going to head over to my content and here's my hoodie category so i'm just going to delete that and let's add a new condition so it's going to be a dynamic data and it's going to be a um, php function so we need to click on the lightning choose php look for output php function echo colon and the name of our function just like that then we say is the same as in our case it must be the same as and in this case you visited the hoodie category so that must be true when we have a look at the condition before it's true it's exactly the same dynamic data check the hoodies cookie and then we're just changing the operator to not equal to true and that's all we have to do to get that condition to work and we can now show or hide content based on that cookie value right let's just check the um the hoodie condition then and if i go back to the website you'll see now it says you visited the hoodie category i'm going to remove that cookie for hoodies it's really quick with um removing and checking on the cookies and refresh now and we'll get the message new hoodie range launched go to hoodies back to the home page and it checks to see if the cookie is loaded well that's how you can um, show or hide content on the website just one other thing that might be better in the code is over here we're checking this function on all the pages so probably what we need to do is add another condition here and just say if and is underscore home and that'll just ensure that the check to see in this case we're only going to run it on the home page so then we only need to do this on the home page if you're running it uh, site-wide then it would be as per the original version of the code but now this um, function to check if the the cookie is set is only going to run on the home page so that's just depending on how you set up your website um, yeah, and of course then you can integrate this anywhere on your website you can include it on product pages uh, promotion pages home pages checkout pages uh, you can use the cookies and yeah it might just be a nice incentive for people to sign up um, to be tracked on your website well i hope you found that interesting thank you for watching